What's up, everybody? This is D-Money with the Canes Insight Daily Podcast. want to tell you about our good friends at Anajar and Levine Accident Attorneys. If you've been in a crash, someone you care about has been in a crash, you may be entitled to significant compensation. Don't go with a rookie. Go with somebody who knows the process, who has experts at every single stage of the process, who will treat you like family, who will make sure that you're protected, taken care of. Don't have to worry about anything except for getting the finest legal care and having your case handled by the absolute best. Take back control of your life. 1-800-747-FREE. 1-800-747-3733. Also want to talk about my friends at Canesware. You can go to the store at Davey, Football Heaven, or Canesware.com if you're not local. Get the absolute best in Miami Hurricanes gear, Miami Dolphins gear, Inter-Miami, Florida Panthers, Miami Heat, Miami Marlins. You name it, they have it. Absolute best when it comes to Miami sports fans, merchandise, and the best staff in the business. Ask anybody. They'll tell you. But if you're not lucky enough to go to the store, go to Caneswear.com. Everything is available there, the spot where Miami fans shop. What is up, Canes fans? Peter Ariz here bringing you today's edition of Canes Insight Daily. Once again, filling in for D-Money this week as host as he is on vacation with the family. Again, if anything happens, though, that we need his word on, he will join us. But I was out at practice today, and... It was my first time out at practice with the media this uh, spring season. You get a chance to see guys in person in pads, right? Because I was out at Pro Day, so a lot of guys were walking around out there. But want to kind of run through some list, a list of observations here. But before that, wanted to tell you about Kane's Connection. Obviously announced our partnership with Kane's Connection, the official NIL provider of University of Miami Athletics. And let me tell you, the interview that we posted yesterday with Wesley Besant through Kane's Connection was awesome. We have a ton of content coming with them in the next few weeks. Today, we will be joined by Elijah Arroyo. And this is a guy who's coming back from, from injury the last couple of years, hasn't been fully healthy. Really excited about him and this tight end room as a whole. Again, Kane's Connection, there's no better way to support Miami student athletes than through Kane's Connection. As you see here in the video, Promo code CIS, 20% off your monthly rate, anywhere from $20 to $1,000 a month. And of course, you can always do a custom donation as well, but 20% off your monthly total there. And again, promo code CIS, join Kane's Connection. There's no better way to support these great student athletes at the University of Miami as we get to know them a little bit throughout this interview series that we've been doing. So excited for you guys all to get to know Elijah Arroyo a little bit better today. But before that, wanted to get into some of these practice observations, right? Um, just going down the line there. And again, we only get 20, 25 minutes in there with the media and, and a lot of it's stuff that is uh, routine, right? So you, we're not getting a lot of the, pod, the, the pads popping, excuse me, but still a lot to take away from that that little time in there um so just going down the line here again kind of out of order in terms of of position but just going through my notes things that that stood out riley williams and pads and i and i noticed this in pro day him standing next to uh, will mallory was out at pro day and obviously will mallory is an nfl tight end not dwarfing him but looking looking huge right same thing with next to elijah Arroyo. elijah Arroyo is a big dude and you can just tell this is not your normal sophomore uh, tight end, right? So had a nice uh, deep ball reception in seven-on-seven seven work. I think he's a guy who can really stretch the field from that tight end spot, just like Elijah Arroyo can. And then obviously Cam McCormick coming in as more as that blocking type. But expecting a big, big jump from Riley Williams this season. Uh, flipping over to the other side of the ball, Cam Bobby Pruitt, a guy that D-Money's been talking about a ton Early on, been running a lot with the ones, had a really nice rep in coverage against Chris Johnson. Obviously, the speedster, and this wasn't a you know a five yard out or or slant or anything like that. This was a, a downfield pass in one on one, really nicely defended by Pruitt. Got one hand on it, kind of tipped it to himself for an interception. But it was a, a really nice play in coverage against a speedy back again downfield. This was not a, a quick in breaking route, you know where. A guy like uh, a guy like Pruitt, uh, you know, could get exposed right against a smaller back. It was a downfield pass and a really a good job by him in coverage. Needs to continue to put some weight on, right? But 
man, this is a guy who you, who you can use in a lot of different roles out there. Again, just one rep, but impressive nonetheless for him. Um, defensively, Chevis Jackson coming in, and he's a new defensive backs coach, obviously. You just see that intensity popping from him in practice. And I mean, this, these are ball security drills, right? And I don't have the audio playing. I'll, I'll post it a little bit later today with the audio. But man, you can see him really getting into it uh, with the guys here. And it just listen, it's you're only you're looking for certain things. And obviously, Chevis Jackson's a new coach here on staff, but bringing the intensity 100%. Um, so listen, that group, a lot to work with in terms of a few guys coming back, but still need to add to that room. Jadis Richard is a guy that stood out to me, and we've said it time and time again on the Canes Insight podcast that he does have NFL-type interest because of that size and speed. Flash last year, especially in that Florida State game, came up big, but he's going to have to step into a big role this year, 100%. But that length of his, I mean, Match can match him up with tight end. Had a nice playing coverage on Elijah Arroyo again in seven on seven work. Um, but obviously, probably going to be a boundary corner for this team. A uh, few more things here as I go through my notes. A Darius Hayes is someone who really stood out at that linebacker spot. I told a couple people out there he he looked like Thurston Armbrister in that 34 with his, I mean, with his sheer size and length. I mean, you're talking about a guy who's legitimately 6'3, 6'3 and a half long arms, had a really nice hit on uh, Chris Wheatley Humphrey Hellcat uh, coming downhill in the hole. That kind of got things going early early in the, the practice session there. Pads were popping for sure. But that's a guy who we, we talk about the, the body types in this linebacker room, right? So just mentioned Cam Pruitt. Chase Smith is a guy who really looks big. D-Money -Money mentioned it the other day, another guy who hasn't been fully healthy, but I think he can be a contributor in that room without a doubt. Darius Hayes was really towering over some of those guys in that room, though. And, and to me, he's someone who, as a freshman, you know, we can't expect too much out of him um, day one in terms of, you know, picking up the play. We saw a guy like Wesley Basanth, who we had on the show last year, talk about how picking things up early as a linebacker uh, isn't the easiest thing. But at the very least, I mean, I would love to see this guy flying around on special teams, you know, make, making plays because that athleticism is there 100%. Uh, a couple things from the wide receiver room that, again, just caught my attention, not having been out there the last couple weeks of, of uh, spring practice. Ray Ray Joseph looks sturdy, looks solid, looks like he's put on some good weight. Coming in as a freshman, look, huge expectations for him, obviously with that speed and his playmaking ability. But I think people had to realize that one, he hadn't been a you know a pure receiver, right? He he had played a lot of running back in his high school career, and two, just needed to put some of that some of that good weight on, right? So I think he's a guy that, as we look for some of these young receivers to step up this season, right? We've talked a ton about Nikar and JoJo Trader, but do not forget about Ray Ray Joseph. He's a guy who you can get the ball in a multitude of ways. He can kind of come in and and hopefully be what Brashard Smith was at times for Miami last season. And we'll see, we'll see what this uh, year brings for him, but physically definitely looking, uh, looking like he's put some really good weight on from last year. And then mentioning Nikar, you can tell coach Kevin Beard at the receiver position really look, he, he coaches all his guys up, but you can tell pulling him aside early in that practice today, working on a couple different things. Uh, when they were when they were doing goal line work, and again, still still young, obviously, but it's been making plays early on in these practices, and that speed. Once once things really get going in these scrimmages, that speed I really think is going to be something that uh, puts a lot of fear in the in the opposing side of the ball. So, Nikar, again, you can tell that Coach Beard really taking him under his wing, and and, and Obviously, did a great job in that recruitment there, but excited for what he could possibly do year one here. So coming up next here on the Canes Insight Daily Podcast, going to be joined by Elijah Arroyo, Miami tight end. We expect a lot of great things from him. And again, this is in conjunction with Canes Connection. Go to canesconnection.com to sign up. Use promo code CIS for a 20% off discount. 
and we will see you tomorrow. Go Canes. All right, Canes fans, very excited to be joined right now by Miami Hurricanes tight end, Canes Connection athlete, Elijah Arroyo. Elijah, appreciate you taking some time today to join the show. How you doing? Doing good, man. Appreciate y'all. So listen, Elijah, recently, and we, we really want to get to know you a little bit. A lot of the fans out there know you on, from the football side, but we'll get to know you personally a little bit here. But I wanted to start with you coming back now fully healthy here. You said recently in an interview after practice that you feel like Elijah Arroyo, you had a big smile on your face, right? So just talk to us a little bit about what that journey's been like the last couple of years and, and how you how you feel right now. Um, well, you know, it's been a long time coming. Uh, you know, I've, I don't know. I, I've always felt like I was a pretty good player, but, you know, I've had these injuries holding me back. And I feel like with injuries, you know, the biggest thing is the mental aspect of it. Just staying. Oh, hey, can y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But, yeah, the biggest thing is, you know, just staying mentally strong, you know, throughout that process. And, uh, you know, I've I've had a good a good group of guys with me, the good – you know, I had the coaches, training staff, you know, they was all, you know, coming together with me and helping me out throughout uh, throughout that. And, uh, you know, just telling me that they believe in me, you know, so I don't I don't lose that confidence and I can come back, you know, feeling feeling like me, like I said. And you're the you're the old guy in that room now. Right. So when you came in, you were the young pup. You had to learn from the guys ahead of you there. What's it like being the veteran in that room and having to, you know, kind of coach some of the guys up and put your arm around some of these young guys? I mean, it's cool. I mean, I'm a I'm an older brother. I got two younger siblings, so I feel like naturally, you know, I kind of take that role. But it's cool, you know, just trying to teach the younger guys, you know, how to be a professional, how to take care of their bodies, how to, you know, treat themselves to, you know, uh, you know, if they have a goal, you know, I got to hold them accountable to, to uh, be the best they can be. So taking it back to really the roots here, because you had an interesting background. Canes fans know you coming from Texas because that's where you got recruited from, but you also spent time in, in Florida and Mexico. So tell us a little bit about your just your upbringing and kind of bouncing around different places. Yeah, so my parents are from here. I was born here. And when I was about seven years old, yeah, I was seven, going into second grade, uh, we had moved to Mexico because my dad was working over there. He was selling timeshare. Uh, but yeah, so we lived over there for about five, six years. It was cool, cool growing up there. It was, it was a lot different, you know, but you know, it was, it was a fun time, you know, I enjoyed it and it, it, I feel like it's cool for somebody to, you know, live in a different culture and like just experience, you know, like how other people live and how, how that goes on. And then, yeah, when I hit yeah, seventh grade is when I moved to Texas and then I finished high school over there just cause, you know better academics and better football, obviously. What yeah. city were you in Mexico? Uh, I was in Cancun. All right. So kind of similar weather right to here. Yeah. 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 The weather's similar. Yeah. I was, was nice. going to ask you how often you whip the Spanish out down here, man. You know, it's crazy when I, uh, when I moved to Texas, I kind of like started losing my Spanish a little bit, you know, I'll, I'll bust it out. Like if I'm, you know, at a restaurant, or, you know, if I if I'm talking to somebody who doesn't speak English, you know, like it, it kind of helps me then. But I'm I'm not really fluent anymore. Like I, I kind of struggle a little bit. Uh, you got Spanglish is, is good enough down here. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That works. It definitely works. <laughs> so just your athletic background, I read that you were in the Canes baseball camp when you were a kid down here. Did you play any other sports growing up, any other positions or were you tight end receiver the whole way up? No. So, I mean, I played a lot of different sports growing up. Like you said, the, the GM that's here for baseball, like he was like he was here at the camps. Like I remember him. That's how I uh, that's how I got into. It. I started talking to him. He's like, yeah, man, just stop by any time. Like I didn't know that was you. Like it, it's crazy how uh, how things work. But now when I was playing football, though, I, I played running back. I feel like all cold players like you got to play the quarterback or running back when you are little league. And then I played, I played linebacker on defense. Now you're obviously physical talking about playing linebacker. I think one thing that we've seen is they say, okay, this guy's a receiving tight end, a little finesse. This guy's the blocking tight end. 
kind of defense knows what's happening when that player goes in. You have a reputation, and from what we've seen, of being a complete tight end. So how important is it to you to be able to do to do both and be a receiver and also be physical? Oh, I mean, I, I feel like that's a thing that not a lot of tight ends have. So I need to, you know, work on anything I can, you know, just to maximize my potential, maximize, you know, my draft stock, anything that goes along those lines. I just want to – I want to be the best player I can be for this team, for myself, for the future, for for everything. Any tight ends that you watch at the next level or historically, obviously there's so many great ones these days, but you try to take certain things away from from different guys? Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I always watch a lot of uh, old Jimmy Graham film. I watch some of Greg Olson. Uh, I was watching some some Shannon Sharp the other day. You know, he's not a UM guy, but I was watching some of him. Uh, Tony Gonzalez. And even the guys now, like Kittle Kelsey, uh, Mark Andrews, like, yeah. I, I, I like evaluating all their film. Do any of those old UM guys reach out to you or give you pointers or just, like, you know, talk to you when they come on campus? Yeah, they'll, they'll come in every once in a while, you know, talk to us, uh, you know, offer to get a film session in or anything. Um, I Actually, I, I've been talking to Will a little bit just because he's in the offseason, Will Mallory. And, you know, it's, it's been a great experience, you know, having that that um, that guidance, you feel me? Just because, you know, it's somebody I'm close with and, you know, we're able to talk ball, talk about, you know, the next level, like what I need to do and like how it is. And, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool getting all that. So putting the football side, just, you know, Elijah, you as a person, someone, if we ask someone, hey, what can you tell us about Elijah Royal? What kind of person are you off the field? Um. I'm kind of, kind of quiet, kind of introverted. You know, I have my my small circle. I have my my little friend group, and other than that, you know, I just kind of stay to myself, honestly. But I I feel like I'm pretty I'm a pretty cool dude though. Do you like do you, like when you're not playing football? Are you like watching sports? Or are you more into like music and something like that? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I'm into music. I'm into, uh, you know, I like to play the game sometimes. I'm into fishing, fish a lot. There you go. But, yeah. All right, so I got to follow up on that one. I like to fish as well. Do you like to go deep sea, freshwater? How, tell me about your fishing. Well, I'm from, I'm from Texas. So, like, well, I'm from, like, in the Dallas area, you know, there's no ocean. So I'm used to freshwater. So that's what I do here. Um, I feel like deep sea is cool, too. I don't really like doing, like, the shoreline fishing or anything. Like, if I'm, if I'm fishing in the ocean, you know, I want to go out on a boat you know, be deep out there. Do you ever get those peacock bass? There's like these giant peacock bass. Oh, yeah, there. yeah, all the time. Yeah, that's that's what we go for. All right, where, where's the spot? Because I got, I'm taking my son next weekend, so I got to know where's the – where's the. you don't tell Ooh, me exactly. I, I, I can't give you all that. I can't give you all that. <laughs> You're uh, but all fish. <laughs> I just, yeah, I, I go like somewhere like down south, like south Miami. It's, it's a lot of good canals down there. And it freaks people out when they're – I talk to people who go bass fishing, like, you know, from other parts of the country, and they're showing pictures of these peacock bass. They're like, man, what do you got going on down there? They got their giant. They got colors. so aggressive. It's like yeah. they've never seen anything like that up north. Yeah, no, it's cool. It's, it's cool seeing uh, fish that size with that type of color and everything. But, yeah. Elijah, I wanted to ask you about Kane's Connection. Obviously, we're here today doing this interview in conjunction with Kane's Connection. Just talk a little bit about – your time working with them, what it's been like, and, you know, the opportunities, some of the opportunities they've, they've provided. Oh, I mean, it's been a great experience. You know, they've, they've been able to help me uh, set my stuff up with, you know, with networking, you know, helping my family out, you know, just being able to, you know, get us right. And when you talk about networking and we're talking about, you know, life outside of football, what do you see as life after football for you? Um, you know, when your career uh, is over with? I mean, what do you see yourself getting into? Honestly, when I'm done playing, I don't even want to get away from football. I'm going to probably go into coaching. Coaching. But um, I don't know about the college level yet. I might just start off at the high school level just because, you know, I, I feel like I'm better at, like, I would be better at developing kids rather than, you know, coming in and, I don't know, I, I feel like it's a lot more to coaching than just, like, like just teaching them plays and, and football and yeah. Right. Yeah. The, men the mentorship and all that. Yeah. 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 Definitely. 
look, you go in the look at the great tight ends that we know about. Travis Kelsey, real tight with Mahomes, Gronkowski, real tight with Brady. That's the old cliche that the tight end is a quarterback's best friend, at least on the field. Tell me about your relationship with the with the quarterbacks in Miami's quarterback room. Obviously, a couple of new ones, some that were here last year. You've been injured, so you haven't had a full season with some of these guys. How's that chemistry coming along? I mean, I feel like quarterbacks and tight ends always just naturally have like a good vibe going, like good good relationships. But yeah, I'm I'm cool with all them boys, you know. I and I feel like uh that's really gonna help us on the field, you know, just having a good relationship, you know, being able to trust each other. Now with one in particular, Cam Ward, what have you seen from his game as far as just you know, obviously every quarterback's different. You as the as the pass catcher gotta know kind of their tendencies and their strengths and weaknesses. What are some yeah. of the things you like about Cam Ward's game? Shoot, he can do it all. You know, he's he's a very smart player, you know. So, like, yeah, he 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 can just, you know, adjust things on the fly. You know, anything he doesn't like, you know, we can switch it up, you know. But, yeah, like, you, you never know what's going to happen with him. Let's talk a little bit about that, that tight end room. Obviously, like we said before, you're you know, you're, you're the older guy in, in that group. But one of the older guys, obviously, Cam McCormick, there there as well but just talk to us about that room as a whole and how it's coming together in, in your opinion oh yeah the whole room's pretty close and uh you know i think i think we enjoy you know working hard together working for each other i feel like when you're working like yeah when when you're doing something for somebody else like working for your brothers like i feel like it's so much better and it's just it, it means a lot more you get what i'm saying so I, I think it's been a good experience, you know, being with them and yeah, with our potential through the roof. I'm I'm ready to see like what those boys can do. You've been everywhere. You've been in Texas, you've been in Cancun, started in Florida, now you're back in Florida. Just having been in Miami for a few years now, how have you adapted? How you're liking just the environment of both the University of Miami and the city of Miami as a whole? Man, I love it. You know, I I missed it here uh during my time gone. But yeah, I feel like Texas, you know, it was a cool place to grow grow up and everything. But um, yeah, I definitely love it here. And what, what do you like about it? Um, well, first of all, I got family down here. So I can, you know, I can see them whenever, you know, I can get a home cooked meal if I need it. Uh, you know, holidays, you know, we can't really go home for Thanksgiving because it's during the season. But as long as we don't have a game, shoot, I can I can still, you know, drive back home. You know, go to my auntie's house or something, get some food. Um, but yeah, other than that, I mean, it's it's always something to do, you know. And I, I don't know, I always lived like close to the water, other than when I was in Texas. But you know, being able to go go to the beach or you know just go see the water whenever I want, I feel like that's that's good too. What's that home cooked meal that you uh, look forward to when you go to auntie's house? I mean, it's usually around Thanksgiving, so I'm getting like. Shoot, some ribs, some mac and cheese, some uh, some collard greens, but yeah, yeah, just stuff like that. There you go, Elijah Royo. Appreciate your time today. Do you have anything else you want to uh, to add here? No, man. Just thank you for all you've done for the University of Miami. Good luck this season, and uh, hope you have an awesome year, man. You deserve it. Yes, sir. Thank you.